Well, Chelsea Wilkinson's with us from Room at the Inn, and uh, good afternoon to you. Hi there. Good afternoon. So Room at the Inn, explain what that is for those who don't know first, and then we'll kind of get into some of the uh, issues on uh, homelessness that we uh, see here in, in Upper Michigan. Yeah, so Room at the Inn is an emergency shelter uh, in, in downtown Marquette. And, um, you know, even though we're in Marquette, we serve folks who are experiencing homelessness from all across the UP. Um, we currently have a 30-bed a shelter, um, but we also offer street outreach services um, to folks in Alger and Marquette County. And um, we actually just got some funding to open up some um, scattered site family sheltering for families who are homeless and not in domestic violence. So, um, you know, we started in 2007, and we have really been growing exponentially to meet the need um, of, of the, you know, increase in homelessness that our, that our region is seeing. Uh, your uh, your press release with uh, some uh, statistics that people are going to maybe scratch their heads about some of these statistics uh, that we're going to get into uh, was a joint press release with the Jansen House. What is the Jansen House? Yeah, so the Jansen House, you know, similar to Room at the Inn, they have um, they have eight beds, eight emergency shelter beds. But but really, the most um, unique thing about the Jansen House is that they have converted an o- the old uh, Jansen Hotel um, into affordable um, apartment units. They're kind of dorm style, but they're you know the the most beautiful thing about those is they're actually affordable, right? They're only two hundred and seventy bucks a month, and you can rent a room and. Um, so that's, you know, a, a price for an apartment that we just don't see uh, in, in the UP anymore. No, we sure don't. Uh, so, but uh, the room at the end, uh, describe what it is. Uh, describe your shelter, and uh, obviously uh, you have to keep costs as low as possible to serve as many people as you can. Sure. You know, I think the bottleneck that we're seeing in the emergency shelter programs, and, and you know, I think that the community as a whole can agree that, the solution to homelessness isn't opening more homeless shelters, right? It's it's how do we make sure that homelessness is rare, brief, and one time? And the only way that we're going to be able to do that is if there are affordable housing solutions for folks when they exit shelter. So, you know, we're seeing right now this huge bottleneck of folks who have been in shelter over a year, some some almost two years, um, and not uh, many of them are employed and, and or on um, you know, uh, uh, social security income, but the fact that, A, there's not enough houses to begin with, and even the houses that uh, do exist, the housing stock that does exist, it's not affordable for folks on a fixed income. So, you know, we're really seeing this bottleneck because there just isn't enough housing. Now, when people hear the word homeless, they, they think of those TV shows where you see, you know, in New York City, people uh, – uh, laying in the street uh, uh, against a fire hydrant or hiding up against, uh, you know, uh, the, the the heating vent. Uh, uh, that stereotype doesn't apply here, does it? Um, you know, I would say that homelessness looks different for every single person that I've had the pleasure of, of serving in my capacity over the last year and a half. Um, you know, you have folks, um, you know, obviously with substance use disorder and maybe some um, untreated mental illness, but really by and large, the majority of folks that we're seeing come through the shelter are gainfully employed. They do have, you know, income from Social Security, um, but being able to maintain stable housing is can really be a challenge for a lot of people. Um, and, you know, we're also seeing folks who, and you kind of describe somebody who we would potentially call chronically homeless, right? So this is someone who um, maybe has been homeless for longer than a year and has a documented disability. And without really great wraparound or supportive services, um, it's really hard for them to remain stably housed. And so um, we're looking at folks with um, traumatic brain injuries, right? So 53% of people who are experiencing chronic homelessness um, have a traumatic brain injury, which makes, um, you know, just day-to-day activities extremely hard. So, You know, we're looking at a lot of different factors that are contributing to this huge increase in homelessness that we're seeing. And so part of Homelessness Awareness Month is is really um, shining a light on some of these really nuanced issues. So you did have uh, in your uh, press, in your report, uh, some some numbers to tell us just how uh, the homeless issue is here in the UP. Uh, Share some of those with uh, with our listeners. 
Yeah, so from uh, 2022 to 2023, the state of Michigan as a whole only saw an increase uh, of about 2% statewide in homelessness. But for the UP, um, we saw an increase of 18%. So in 2022, we served about 1,000 folks in the UP who were experiencing homelessness. And in uh, 2023, we saw over 1,200 folks. Um, needing assistance. And unfortunately, we think that 2024 is, is on track to surpass that at a, at a pretty alarming rate. And so uh, what services can you do you, you, to help? You can't help everybody, unfortunately, because you just don't yeah. have those uh, that kind of resource. But uh, what is it that you guys can do to help as many people as possible? You know, I don't, I don't believe that, uh, you know, emergency shelters are going to be a silver bullet here, right? This is a community-wide effort that says, um, you know, we care uh, deeply about the people in our community. We believe that everyone deserves a roof over their head despite, you know, whether it be bad decision-making or a series of unfortunate events outside of people's control. Um, no matter what the case may be, I think we, we can all agree that when homelessness increases and, um, you know, the need for emergency services increases, the need for um, first responders um, to, to, to respond to a, a medical emergency or the use of our emergency departments or our jail system, you know, overall, I think it is a better investment to be proactive about making sure that the wraparound services exist for people who are in crisis as opposed to being reactive as a community and paying, you know, 10 times over in emergency room visits or, um, you know, insurance premiums or, or all these other things that um, as taxpayers, right, we all want to make sure that those costs are as low as possible. So how do we do that? We invest in the programs like Room at the Inn, like the Jansen House, like the Women's Center, um, and we're really able to make an investment in the well-being of these of this safety net th that our community has um, created. Okay, anything else you'd like to mention before we close that I did not get to in this uh, interview, Chelsea? Yeah, I would just really encourage folks, um, even if even if you don't know which organization you want to support, um, any of the community foundations across the UP, um, you know, they do a lot of work with with housing and homelessness services. So. If you're not really quite sure which which nonprofit you want to support, I always encourage giving um, to your local community foundation or to the United Way um, because they're making sure that, the, that those dollars are being siphoned um, to all of our programs. Um, but also, I would just um, I would just encourage um, the public to think about you know really unique ways that even if it's not a donation in terms of, of dollars, a donation of somebody's time, um, a donation of their talent, right? Like if they're a handyman or woman and they want to spend a Saturday helping us fix up, um, you know, little minor repair projects at the shelter, right? All of these little ways that the community can be involved, we really want to um, shine a light on the fact that, you know, we can't do this work without without everybody's involvement. 